Hello, welcome back to the Sugar Shack. We're out here, we've got the evaporator going. Now we've got the bottling side of it going. So what I've got going here in my brewery kettle is I've got a very, 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 very light boil because I'm just trying to get across the finish line. Now, what does that mean? Let's set you up here and you can take a look. All right, so what's going on here is the sap was already almost turned into syrup coming into the finishing area. So what I've got here is something called a hydrometer. And then I fill it with the boiling syrup. I let the excess pour out and then I, it's a little higher than I'd like it, but just so I can show you, there's a red line there on the hydrometer and it's gonna drop down and you actually want that to meet the top of the syrup. I'm doing it slightly wrong simply so I can show you what's going on here. So you can see the red line's actually floating above the syrup. That means we need to dilute it with some 98% syrup, just, just, just to make it equalize. Um, typically you want the syrup to be lower in that steel cup so that the surface tension isn't bubbled up. You want it to be bubbled down when you catch that line. So I'm gonna do that, see if we can get it to syrup, and then we'll head on over to bottling it. All right. It's very, if you can see, very, very close. So I'm gonna dilute it maybe another half a pot or so, and then we're good to, good to go with bottling it. All right, so fast forwarded ahead here, and we has syrup. Ah. Oh, or don't, do we not have syrup? Executive decision, we have syrup. So we'll get this out of the way. Turn the heat off. And we're gonna let that rest for a second and I'll show you what's going on here in my bottling pot. So the bottling pot is the same uh, brewery kettle, 10 gallon. And the only difference being that I don't boil anything in it. This is just for finishing. So I had a batch earlier and now I'm doing another one. So what's going on inside is I put some brewery fittings. I put a four way and some other nipples on there. And in each of the nipples, I put a little piece of pre-filter. And that way, if any niter forms in this pot, because it's hotter than 190 or some, something like that, when I put it in here, um, That'll catch any little bits of niter and just, you know, help have one final little filter step before it comes out this, this faucet and goes into a bottle. All right, so now we've done what I'm gonna call a level change, like we're in the UFC. And we're gonna get the, the syrup out of the bottling pot, or sorry, out of the finishing pot and into ow, the bottling pot. So, ready for some high techness? We have a bucket. And onto this bucket goes the finishing pot. Now first, before I do anything, I'm gonna run some, I'm gonna run some just loose syrup through this just to sterilize everything again. All right. So now that my valve and everything is sterilized, I'm going to take the filter, put it on the pot on a bucket, and then we're going to start pouring it into the bottling pot. All right, so while we're doing this, I'll talk about my filter strategy. So I haven't got a filter press yet because I'm a cheap Dutchman, but I have 
three Orlon filters and a bunch of pre-filters. Now you might think I'm going crazy by putting so many filters in a row, but this year has been suspiciously cloudy syrup and I've been seeing it kind of around a lot. So my normal strategy of a bunch of pre-filters and one Orlon filter was not cutting it. So I decided to just push the boat out and put half of my filters on it in each batch. It seems to be doing the trick to make us nice and crystal clear on the other side. Okay, so now it's my turn to sit on the bucket. And we've got our bottles. We've got our bottle caps. We're doing two different sizes. We've got 500 mil and we've got one, one liters. So first off, before we pot it, I'm gonna take my pot and I'm gonna run some through there just to make sure that everything's sterilized and nice and hot. And then, here we go. There you go. To give it a little roll around so the nice hot sap sterilizes and seals the lid. And we have a bottle of beautiful, I'm going to call that dark slash very dark syrup. Because of the way we make our syrup, we don't really end up with very much, uh, much above amber, even in the early season. So yeah, while I continue to bottle, I just wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind when it comes to syrup and other stuff to do with farming and homesteading. I'm part of a bunch of groups on social media and whatever. and. Something that always seems to get under my skin is when people are constantly complaining or talking about spending all kinds of money and they're even smaller than I am. I mentioned in the last video, I've got 250 taps. There's people out there with 50 taps who are talking about buying $5,000 evaporators and upgrade this and upgrade that, which if you're a rich guy, whatever, but what's the, what's the fun in that and where's the ingenuity? There just, there isn't any. I invested some money this year uh, because I wanted to upgrade my production because I sold out I sold out the last two seasons but you know I invested what I had which was 2500 bucks which was about the you know the profit that I made net on maple syrup last year so maple syrup as a enterprise has not actually made my farm any money yet but I was able to upgrade my bottling equipment and my uh, my sap collection and the evaporator so it's been a success, and I think with a little ingenuity, people can do a lot better than just going to the nearest CDL dealership and buying whatever the latest and greatest is. Anyway, hope you enjoyed coming along with me to bottle and see what's going on and see how this amazing maple product is made. Ah! A close one. So yeah, thanks for coming, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.